Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Behind me is my new project. Um, this is a 1997 Toyota MR2 Mark II. Um, as you can see, it's not in the best of shape. Um, I bought this for a new series I'm doing, which is I'm trading up from 500 pounds up to a Porsche Cayman, hopefully, or a 996 if I can, if I get that lucky, but we'll see. But yeah, this is the first car in the series. My budget's 500 quid and I found this on Copart for buy it now for £425 with the Copart fees that came to just over 500 quid. so I'm technically out of budget a little bit but 50 quid I think um, so a bit over budget but when I saw the rear lights I just had to buy it um, I'll explain all about that in the end if you don't know but yes uh, it's here and I'll show you how I got it here I managed to hitch the trailer up to the Volkswagen um, went and picked it up yesterday, and here's how it got here. All right, I just got back with the car. Not gonna lie to you guys, I'm a bit worried about this one. It looks pretty rough. Um, let me get some close-up shots of it. it it's, it's pretty bad. just noticed a pretty big problem with trying to get this off the trailer uh, I mean I should have thought about it before it went on here but I didn't um, this is the door that's as far as I can open it um, I can't get in there at all not in a million years and the keys I'll show you where the keys are the keys this one opens a little bit less. Right down there in the footwell. Um, I have no idea what I'm gonna do here. Just had a thought. This top's supposed to come off, I think. Let's see. How the hell do you think that comes off? I think it's like, there's like a clip in here. Feels like there's a handle here, hang on. Oh, here we go. Put that over there for now. Oh damn. That's mouldy. Jesus Christ. Keys are down there. Probably gonna remove this one too, so I can get the keys out. This one. I better get my hand in there. Put this down on the floor. Okay. Going in. All right, got the keys out of the car. Next thing to do is find out where the battery is. Um, I think it's going to need some juice. I want to power the windows down and I hopefully want to try and start it. So luckily, um, in the last video, uh, this company, Toplon, they noticed that um, my battery charger had broken. So they sent me out this. It's just a jump starter, so that'll be really useful. I'm gonna get that wired up. Ooh, comes in a case. Well, that looks nice. See if it's got any power on it. 75%, that should be enough, I reckon. So, engine in the back would tell me that the battery would be in the front, 
just from weight distribution. So, see if this thing opens. Oh yeah. Ooh. That looks pretty bent in there, doesn't it? Here's the battery down here. Get the jump pack on it, see if we can power some things up. Looks like the toolkit's still down there. All right, got the jump pack on. See if we can get these windows down now. <laughs> oh, it's so moldy. Um, this is disgusting. Some power, see if this window goes down. And the other one. Yeah, that's it. Hey, take the oil before I start it. That's easier. That's better. I think it's down there somewhere. God, this is so mouldy. Ooh. There's an engine in there. Alright, let's check the oil level. That doesn't look like it's got any oil in it whatsoever. That's worrying. Alright, I've topped it up with oil. I'm hoping that it now shows on the dipstick. A little bit of oil in there. Should be enough. See if it starts. Alright, this is the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing starts. Shut it off because I don't think it's got any coolant in it because the radiator is at the front, I think. Also, the revs just seem to be starting to pick up then. That's a bit worrying. Okay, alright. This under all these straps, get this thing off of here. Right, I'm going to make a guess that the lights don't work, but I should have enough visibility to get down there to the workshop.
All right, so the car got here under its own power, so it does run and drive, which is pretty good, I think. Um, I think that's what these symbols mean. Someone did try and explain these to me. Uh, I still don't really understand it, but yes. Um, someone put, oh wow, that's a dent. And it is, they're right. Next thing I think we have to do is just give this thing a thorough clean. It is just filthy. You know, all these, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's just, before I start stripping it apart, I'm gonna give it a massive clean. Um, also, I wanna see what's in the boot, because I haven't looked in the boot yet, um, or the glove box, or anything, because it's just so disgusting in here. Um, it really is horrible, I don't really wanna be in here. But, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what's in the boot. I'm sure there's probably got nothing in it, but I like starting the boot, it's always good. I think it's this one here. Huh, made the right noise. Uh, does the wind come up with it? I guess it does. Ooh, what's that? So we got a nice big piece of foam. Don't know what that's for. And some plastic sheets. And a lot of sand by the looks of things. Plastic sheets. There's nothing in here. Someone's already been in. Ooh, I can see some rust over there. Let's not delve into that too far right now, shall we? Don't need to know about that yet, do we? Let's see this side. Ooh, just as bad. But yeah, nothing in there. Let's check the glove box. I mean, Copart usually go through all these cars and then there's never really anything in them anyway, but some paperwork would be nice. Nope. I don't know what that is. Some sort of funnel, that's pretty gross. What's this? Police aware. This has obviously been sitting at the side of the road for a while. Uh, let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure, don't they put those on cars when they just, you know, they've been sitting for ages. Uh, I might be wrong there. No radio. Looks like someone's nabbed that probably. Uh, let's see what's in here. I assume this, is that right? Yeah, then that comes down. Nothing. Someone's had everything out of this car. No, no, no good surprises or bad surprises. Little storage cupboard down here. Nothing in there. Is there one on the driver's side? Let's have a look. Let's see if I can get in there. Storage cupboard. Nothing. Now it's empty too. Absolutely nothing. We got in here. Gross. Um, oh, the locking wheel nut. Now that is very good because we're going to need to take the wheels off. All right, let's get this thing properly cleaned up so we can see what we're working with.
All right, so that looks a million times better. The paintwork's still pretty dull though, so it, I think it needs a thorough machine polish, but we're pretty far from that anyway. The front end is really bad. Um, just from cleaning it and going around it, just looking at it, the whole front has basically shifted over that way. I'll show you guys that in a minute. But yeah, the um, interior came up okay. I need to, he's a full detail, but I've got rid of most of the mold. Um, yeah, there was like the thickest grime in this middle piece. I'm not sure what was going on there. It was all over the steering wheel, the gear stick. I mean, I've cleaned up the gear stick best I can, but that is shredded to be honest. So if you come around the back, one of the main reasons I bought this car as soon as I saw it was because it had these lights in the back. I think they're called kooky rear lights. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation, but they are, I don't think they're on all MR2s, maybe they're quite rare or something, but so online, a pair of these with the middle section and a key is a thou over a thousand pounds. That's pretty much double the value of the car right there. The engine alone would be worth 500 quid. And I don't know about the rest of the parts on the car, but yeah. All right, so this is where I get to the big conundrum of what to do with this car. The rear lights are worth a thousand pounds and the engine's probably worth 500 quid or so. Do I break this car for parts or do I repair it? Um, repairing it, this whole front end has shifted over a little bit. About, I think it's about just over an inch probably at the front that the whole front has shifted. Uh, there's not nothing that can't be pulled out, I'm sure. We have to get some inventive ways of pulling it, I reckon. But it will come out. It will probably need a new radiator, new bumper, new bonnet, new lights, new... I've I can find the whole front end for sale of these cars because they get broken quite a lot. Around £400, about the price of this whole car. But So it is doable. I can definitely fix it. Or I could just fix it up a little bit, straighten out the best I can and sell it on as, an, as a project for someone else to either break or fix. That would probably get the least amount of money, but that would move us on to the next project quicker and maybe keep the ball rolling. Breaking it would probably be second quickest, and I reckon fixing it would probably take the longest, but it can be done. All the things can be done, so I'm going to leave that to you guys. You tell me what you think I should do. We can either break it, fix it, or button it up and sell it as a project. But yeah, tell me what you think. But that's probably going to be it for this video. In the next one, I'm going to rip all this front end off, see how bad it really is. Um, we'll get it on the lift and then see how bad it is underneath. Because if it's absolutely rotten underneath, then they're pretty much unsal unsalvageable. But it was on the road in 2023, apparently. And it had no advisory for rust, which I kind of don't really believe because I've seen quite a lot of rust on it. But it may have done. It could have been a dodgy MOT. I hope not. But yeah, we'll take this whole front end apart and I may even tie a chain around the front crash bar to a tree and just go backwards as hard as I can. Mm -hmm.